Hey guys, today I'm gonna deadhead some lupin. Really simple. Uh, basically, you take these dead stalks and you follow them all the way down. All the way down. You can see all the way in there. The stalk goes all the way down and you just cut it off in there. I'll do it again. Follow it all the way down. Excellent. Okay. I'm gonna leave this one because it's still blooming. I hit or miss. I'll probably be back in a few more days to cut that one off. Um, another thing about Lufin is the powdery mildew on the leaves. I just sprayed this for mildew last week. These were the leaves that were really badly affected. And of course, the spray burns the mildew. So it's not actually the leaves that are burnt, it's the mildew on top of them, but they kind of burn the leaves with it. So what I might do is just take these out. Same thing. I'm just going to follow the dead, nasty looking leaves all the way down to their base. And just take them out. Could probably just pull these out actually. Yeah, that might be easier. <clears throat> and that'll clear up the inside and make it a little bit more airy on the inside. It also gets rid of the uh, mildew spores. Um, so yeah, I don't always deadhead my lupin. Sometimes I let it go to seed because sometimes the seeds are viable. But I left this one to go to seed last year and nothing came of it, so I'm just going to deadhead it this year because I'm not really any point in leaving it. So but that's all there is to it. Grab the stem, follow it all the way down, and take it out at the base. I've been asked why I cut the stalk all the way down when, like this one, I took a whole bunch of green with it. It's because if you only cut it up here, where the seed pods are, if you just take this off and you leave all this green, you get a stick covered in green that's quite unsightly. And then these leaves do tend to die and look gnarly a lot sooner than the rest do. So you'll get a much healthier looking happy mound of a plant if you take the blooming stems all the way down to the bottom. And then uh, what lupins tend to do, and I didn't get ahead of it this year, so this is what it looks like. They get mildew and these leaves just crisp up and die. And so I never got my mildew spray on them, so that's why they look like this. Um, but they regrow from the base. So when they look really scraggly like this, but they have a nice basal growth down here, now it's safe to just cut off all of this scraggly crap. Now, another word of caution, after you're done cutting something that has mildew, wash your pruners. And if you're able to disinfect them with rubbing alcohol or vinegar or something, do that also. Because you don't want to spread powdery mildew to other things. So I'm just going to do all of these. We're not going to practice on them. But I wanted to show you what, what to do. So if you run across it in a garden somewhere, you just take them right down to the base. And any individual leaves that are moldy, mildewy, can come out too. Pretty much any old leaf that was on the original plant this spring will be covered in mildew because this one is completely overtaken. But once you take all the old dead leaves out, I'm going to wash my hands too. Once you take all the old dead leaves out, you have a nice little mound. And if you're really, really lucky, they might bloom again. I've only ever seen one lupin bloom twice a year, and it's planted over there. So I've finished uh, taking all the dead and diseased and ugly out of here, but there is still some more mildew. If I don't treat this, it's just going to look the same as it did before. So I want to make sure to treat this and get it, um, get the mildew gone. So how I treat mildew is baking soda. So I've already put a little bit of water in here. I'm just going to take a little bit of baking soda. This is an older bag, so it's all stuck together. You don't need a lot, just put your hand, whatever. Put it in you want enough that it'll um, be effective and coat the leaves, but not so much that it clogs the sprayer. Because these things clog easily. Now, to make the baking soda stick, we're going to add a little dish soap. Otherwise, what happens is baking soda and water will just bead up and roll right off the leaves. It won't do anything. It's just a little squirt. It 
shake. That's very nice. So now's about the perfect time. This is the only hour during the day that these are in shade. Lupins love full sun. If they're ever put in shade, they mildew up and mold even more. Both sides of the leaves where I can. Not a problem to get this on your hands. It's just baking soda and dish soap. So okay. Does that fit on any plant that has mildew? I've never had a problem with it. Any plant that has mildew, mold, fungus, bacteria, uh, moss, we use baking soda on moss. How often do you do it? Uh, as often as it's needed. Really? Yeah. I don't think I've ever had to reapply. Huh. Maybe one time on a hedge of roses that's been fighting mildew, uh, powdery mildew, for years that we've been using chemicals on, we've been doing everything. I sprayed baking soda twice. Done. Blows my mind. Don't spend your money on the chemicals. In my opinion, they're not worth it. And I'm also going to disinfect my tools. This is a perfect thing to wash your pruners with because it's going to kill any mold spores that are on there. The soap will wash it right off, and then I can wash it again in the hose, make sure everything's gone.